It's Big Mana Week. What's going on, guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code it resolves 10 yp for 10% off your entire purchase. What's going on, guys, and welcome to part one of Big Mana Week. This is the next challenge week. If you guys don't know what these challenge weeks are, essentially we task all of you amazing people in our Discord with the challenge to build a deck around a particular idea. This idea, or this week, is built upon uh, creating as much mana as possible in a single turn. Now, that does include just tapping all your lands and seeing how that goes. So if, uh, if all we got is five lands and that's all we can do, that's fine. That counts. That counts for five. So we're going to hopefully do some really cool stuff today. I've got some really interesting submissions from you guys, including a few infinite combos. We're not starting there, though. We are going to be starting with a different style deck. Just as a heads up, though, if anybody would like to take part in these, you can. There is the Discord link down below with the Challenge Submissions channel. That's open to anybody, and I love to see what you guys can come up with. I highly encourage anybody with any amount of deck building prowess to, to join in and hang out with us, because it really is a fun time. The winner also does receive a free mystery proxy pack with five mystery proxies that are normally only available to Patreon members. So, uh, first of all, if you would like to support our Patreon, the link is down below. But second of all, if you want to, to get your hands on some of these proxies, this is the only other way to do it. Uh, and I promise you, it will be a very fun time. But without further ado, guys, let's go ahead. Let's jump into today's deck. And here we are. We are kicking it off with our good old friend Death's Ace, who has won a number of these challenge weeks already with essentially a like historic Tron deck, as he likes to call it. Uh, it is very much based off of Mana Rocks. So we've got things like Guardian Idol, Mind Stone, uh, Power Stone Shard. We've got Hedron Archive. We've got Forsaken Monument, hoping to double up on some of that mana. And then Chromatic Ori, uh, all here to basically give us and generate quite a lot of mana. Now, to doubly use some of those, we do have things like Manifold Key, which we can use to untap an artifact and then tap it again. Uh, we do have Vizier of Tumbling Sands as well. This allows us to essentially do the same thing, but uh, without spending any mana, which is good. And then we do have Nyx Bloom Ancient, which is a way of essentially producing three times as much mana instead of any uh, instead of the normal type, uh, which is pretty good as it turns out. Um, we do have Pattern Matcher, which can also help us pull out Nyx Bloom Ancients or Viziers or Stone Coil Serpent. And Stone Coil Serpent as well as Blue, Blue Sun Zenith are really the big payoffs here. Death Ace, I just wanted to give you a quick heads up. You did have Walking Ballista, which is a much better option than Stone Coil Serpent, but unfortunately that is not in Historic. So we had to go with the Stone Coil Serpent instead as an X mana spell. So uh, we do have uh, Kinnon, Bonder Prodigy, which also helps produce a little bit of extra mana, and really a another kind of nice little payoff here that we can put some creatures on the field, mostly Nyx Bloom Ancient if we roll the dice with it. Uh, but everything else is essentially just ramp. Remember, the challenge isn't to win the game. The challenge is to make as much mana as possible, and this deck can certainly do it. So without further ado, we are going to run this through three games, see how it goes, uh, and see how much mana we can actually produce. And here we are, guys, for game number one. And the question becomes, do we want to keep this hand? It's not a super rampy hand, if I'm honest. It does have a couple of lands. Also, it does have a Vizier uh, that we can cycle away. I'm going to try it. I don't love this hand, though. It's a very kind of do-nothing hand. But the Forsaken Monument is such a powerful card. I do want to keep that if we can help it. This really gets us out of the way of those aggro decks if we can gain a bunch of life off of it and things like that. So I feel like it's probably worth it. Um... I think we just go Fable Passage. I mean, it, truth be told, both of these are tapped lands at this point. So the, the best bet is to hopefully draw a basic and then be able to throw this down without having to uh, basically lose out on a uh, untapped mana. But we'll see how this goes. I do, def I, I mean, we absolutely need some lands. So let's hope that we can draw some. Death Ace, I really do like your deck here, by the way. This is a fun one. Um, we've seen decks like this a good bit. Uh, just mono brown is usually the way to go. Uh, and it's really sick. So I'm happy to, to see it here. Okay, uh, unfortunately not, but that's okay. Let's go ahead. We're just gonna throw the manifold key out there. Uh, I don't want to play the Stone Coil Serpent too early. If this is a mono white deck, what I'd really love to be able to do is just kind of throw this out 
uh, with a number of good counters on it to essentially get us where we need to be. Uh, and that'll block and you know do all the stuff that we need it to do. Worth noting right now, we do technically have uh, two mana. So we are at two. Desace, you're in the lead, my friend. I like it. Uh, also, guys, I hope you had a fantastic weekend. Um, I This was honestly the first weekend in a while that Caitlin and I didn't necessarily have a ton that we had to do. Uh, I did get tuxes and all that kind of stuff for the wedding, so we are getting closer to that. As you guys know, or hopefully know, I am getting married in October. Caitlin and I could not be more excited. October 9th is the date. Uh, and I, like I said, it's going to be a really awesome time. I cannot wait, but, uh, we do have a lot to get ready between now and then. Thankfully we, we spaced it out pretty far, uh, from our initial engagement because she was in grad school. And so it actually isn't that bad. Like we're not, we're not, um, like struggling to get everything done by any means, which is kind of nice. Uh, so let's have you, um, but there is still a number of things to do. And so we're just hoping that we can get everything kind of taken care of in time. Um, I mean, this isn't great, honestly, but it is a land, so I am going to take it. We still need one more land. If we can get one more, we've got Hedron Archive, and then we're kind of set. Uh, we are going to play an extra green here. Uh, that gives us the three green that we need for the Nyx Bloom Ancient, which I think is definitely worth it. Um, and we'll see what the opponent does here. They are obviously white and black, uh, so very curious to see what they end up playing, but... I don't know. I'm 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 very intrigued. Obviously a very aggro centric deck. It could be like a Soren deck. Interesting. Okay. Adanto Vanguard plus Heliod. So obviously there is going to be some kind of life gain element, I have to assume. Oh no. Uh alright, well, the only thing we can do is uh throw this out, and I am gonna do that here. If nothing else, it just uh gives us a turn for blocks. It's not great to be honest, but it's an option. Um, hmm. Ah, I love orange soda. I don't know why. All right. Let's see what the opponent does. They're going to hit the manifold key. That actually isn't that big of a deal. Um, I mean, that definitely helps us. Don't get me wrong, but it's not the end of the world by any means. Um, I actually do kind of want to block here and force a discard or excuse me. Force them to pay for life, not discard. Um, not the best play, obviously, but it does kind of force a little bit. Um, all right, well, we got a guardian idol, <laughs> uh, which does mean that if they don't have another fracture, we do get Hedron Archive down, uh, which can then get us to Forsaken Monument, which can then get us kind of further down the road. So if we can get Nyx Bloom Ancient down, we might be in pretty good shape here. Um, there's the Soren. That's scary. Uh, all of this is very scary because they have lifelink now, so this essentially just gets tons of counters. Uh, but Soren also has lifelink, so it's going to get more counters. Blah, I don't like it. Um, <laughs> all right. Sure. <laughs> yep. Uh, so they obviously are going to just power this thing up as much as they possibly can, which is definitely the right thing to do. There's another land, um, which is actually really relevant. So I'm going to take that opportunity then to play the Forsaken Monument now before we just straight die, um, because this does gain us life over the long term. Uh, can they just beat us this turn? Uh, let's see. They don't have anything in the graveyard. They can hit us uh, for probably a good bit, though. Ah, yeah, so that wins. Is that correct? Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life, so then they just attack for enough that, yeah, they, they got us. All right, so we were able to create five, uh, which Death Ace I know is at super high, um, but I have, I have a hunch that we can do a little bit better than that. I am going to let them attack out here just to be safe, um, but truth be told... They're going to put a counter here, and then they're kind of good to go. All right, maybe we won't. We'll just go ahead and concede. Let's not waste the time. Let's go ahead and jump into game two. And here we are with game two. This is unfortunately not a great start. Uh, we are going to have to mulligan this. We just don't have any extra lands, and the one we do have is a tapped land. So I'm going to mulligan. 
This is fine. It's truthfully not great either, but it is an option, so we are going to keep it. It's got a couple lands, um, and so I feel like it's worth keeping. The trick here, Death Ace, is that you, I believe, put 20 lands in the deck, which is not... I, I get why you did that, to be clear. Um, but it does make it a little bit tricky to get the initial start that you need to make sure that we're hitting those land drops so we can then drop things like the Power Stone Shard and Forsaken Monument. That being said, I do get the idea. The idea is we've got a bunch of mana rocks. Why would we need too many lands? Totally get it. Um, but I do think that that's something worth noting here. Um, let's cycle. Uh, we could have attacked, I suppose, too, but we don't really need to. Oh, man. All right. Uh, unfortunately, no lands. Uh, so, so far, we're at two. Uh, so, Death Ace. Unfortunately, man, we are not getting there super well. Um... All right, uh, do we want to attack in? I'm going to say yeah. Let's see what they do. If they want to block, that's fine. Um, truth be told, we just want to keep them from getting too high on their life total. With the speaker, uh, it's very important that we not only deal damage, but prevent them from gaining as much life as possible. So, uh, yep. Very good. Um, Still no land. Uh, unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. Okay, so we have to throw this out there. I mean, we can't do anything else. Uh, Death Ace, I'm sorry, my friend. Uh, and also, I will also say, Death Ace, as something I have noticed about your deck building, you're very creative in your deck building, which I really appreciate. Uh, but something that you oftentimes do is build a higher than 60 card deck when you don't necessarily need to. I would suggest... Um, very, very kindly suggest that I think, um, keeping it at 60 cards makes things so much more consistent that it's probably worth, uh, keeping to that rule as best you can. Um, unless the situation calls for something different, of course, but, uh, I think in this situation we would have done a lot better without quite so many, um, you know, extra spells and things like that. Like the pattern matcher is very cool. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think we necessarily needed it. Um, and I think we could have done without some of these other pieces as well. That being said, it is your deck. I don't want to discourage you by any means. So I do appreciate that you just put a deck together for us because it is really fun to uh, to see what you guys come up with. So no worries at all. Just something to think about for future uh, endeavors. Uh, but unfortunately here, I mean, we are very 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 far behind and there's a cultivate which does mean i believe we just lose this turn uh which means unfortunately we only got to two this time uh which is fine it's okay we've got i i do think that given a good draw we can certainly get a lot higher than five which was what we got on the first game so i uh i believe in us Des Ace. don't don't you worry we will get there all right, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and concede. <laughs> we're going to go ahead. We're going to jump into game three, excuse me, and see if we can make this one happen. And here we are for game number three. Death Ace, I believe in us. I think we can do this. Do not worry. Do not get discouraged. We can certainly do this. Um, I think we actually keep this hand based on the number of lands that we have. It just means that any, any card we draw is fairly live. Uh, and because we actually have some cyclers here with the Viziers as well, we don't necessarily have to worry too much about, um, you know, not really drawing anything. Uh, hopefully we can kind of get around that with what we've got. Uh, and that's really good too. So let's do this. We are going to go ahead and play this first, uh, because we do want to make sure it comes into play untapped if we can help it, since these are guaranteed untapped. <clears throat> uh, next turn, we obviously just get to throw the, uh, Mind Stone down here. We will probably void... So we can scry as well. Um, oh, maybe not. Maybe it's this. I think it is. Uh, we'll reveal that again. And we'll just play out this Mind Stone here. Um, so much, much, much better start this time. Uh, we do have the Blue Sun Zenith to kind of deal or, or utilize some of this excess mana that we hopefully will get here. But things we need to keep in mind, obviously they do have flyers. So what we need to find is... Um, in particular, the the Stone Coil Serpent, which is just such a good payoff for a deck like this. So let's see what we can do. I'm going to Power Stone Shard here. Uh, I'm then going to throw this down. That's very good. That's pretty good. Um, you can tap. So that would basically mean that... Yeah, I think we keep it. 
I mean, it's a it's a mana enabler for sure, uh, and so I do think it's worth keeping that. We obviously can play it next turn as well, so I think that that's worth it. Uh, but we do have a lot of power on the opponent's side of the field, so some stuff that we are going to have to contend with uh, for sure. Let's go ahead and throw this out. Uh, and I think the play is just going to be Vizier. Um, just trying to get some stuff down onto the field, of course, and we will see how the next turn plays out. Hopefully we don't just die, um, but we do have the, the Bonder Prodigy that we could activate, uh, I believe. One, two, one, two, three, four. At least get very close. Uh, there's a Galta. That's super scary. Um, hmm. Okay. And a Witching Well, that's fine. So let's, let's just be clear. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we are already at eight. So uh, just a heads up, Death Ace, we are getting there at the very least in terms of how much mana we can produce. Whether we win the game or not, maybe not. And technically, it's actually more than that. We can go 10 uh, because we do have the Vizier. So worth noting, we actually have a good bit of mana on the field at the moment. The question becomes, can we actually win the game? Uh, which is secondary to actually creating the mana. So we will see. My turn. All right. Now it's 11. Uh, I'm going to throw that on the bottom. Solely because I do think we want to spin the wheel here. So let's do that. Ooh, not a great hit, uh, but it is a hit. Um, I think we just take another Vizier. Uh... Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll cycle this, I suppose. We could have just played it, but um, we'll untap you, I guess. Doesn't super matter. Um, and then we can play this for what, two? Cancel. Tap, untap this. Okay, now we can play this for four. Want to make sure that we're doing the best we can. So, okay. We did make quite a bit of mana that turn. Um, no attacks, obviously. I think we're just dead here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So I believe we've made thirteen mana that turn. I'm gonna write that down. Uh, do feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, because I might be miscounting here. Um, but regardless, that's actually a really strong start. Uh, so Death Ace, I think we're finally at least getting the mana that we need. Uh, now, the question is here, obviously, what do we do? I mean, I think we just have to double block. Uh, I mean, there's nothing else we can really do. This does have trample, so unfortunately, we just die if we if we let it hit blindly. Um, all right. Uh, tap you. Do this, uh, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, yep. I mean, just because we can, uh, it's about the best thing we can do, so I think that it's worth it. Um, yep, and that's going to be it, unfortunately. No attacks. Discard one. All right, so we are just dead here, but we did get 13, and I think that is the highest. Now, again, correct me in the comments section, guys, because I do want to make sure that we get this right in terms of how much mana we could produce. Um, last turn was technically more mana, I believe, because we did get to cycle the Vizier plus tap uh, this Vizier to untap an artifact. So I believe that was technically more mana. Um, that being said, obviously, we we finally got there. So Death Ace, we did it. Uh, still not 100% great. We didn't win, but that's okay. That's secondary. Let's go ahead. Let's talk about this deck a little bit. All right. So Death Ace coming in strong, honestly. Uh, Death Ace, as I said in the and I believe game one or two, very creative deck builder. It's always a pleasure, Death Ace, to have you on this. I know you you're an avid watcher of the series as well uh, as taking part in it, and so I couldn't be more appreciative. I really do appreciate you as as well as everybody else who submits decks uh, being a part of these challenge weeks. It's really, really, really fun uh, to see what you guys can come up with, and certainly this was no different. So thank you, Death Ace, for what was a really, really fun 
deck. We did get to 13. Uh, and again, I believe that's the highest. Death Ace, go back and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm counting on you a little bit there because obviously this is your deck. I want to make sure we get you uh, squared away correctly. But not a bad showing. The first two games, I think land uh, was very simply the issue, uh, and that's okay. But I do think there are some deck building uh, ideals that you could maybe shoot for in the future that might help with that kind of thing. Now, again, I want to say that in the context of if you are looking to build a super efficient deck, if you just want to have fun and deck build like you're deck building right now and enjoying that process, don't change a thing that you are doing. We have a great time with your decks regardless, so it's not something that I'm asking you to change by any means. It's just a, a, a friendly suggestion that if you would like to make a more consistent deck, do stick to that 60 card limit if you can. Uh, that ensures that you're gonna get the cards that you would like to get. Be very careful of that land count. I don't think, I, I understand your mindset of not putting a whole lot of lands in a deck like this, so don't get me wrong when I say that you should have changed it. What I'm saying is that you could very easily evaluate that a little bit further and maybe up it by one or two, maybe not a lot. Uh, but those one or two lands can really change uh, a game very strongly. So just some things to keep in mind. And Death Ace, again, a huge thank you for the deck. It's it's an absolute fantastic one. 13, guys, is the number to beat. So we do have two more deck lists. Wednesday, we will, of course, have part two, as well as the announcement for next week's challenge. And then Friday, we will find our winner. But if you would like to participate, please check out that Discord link. Until then, guys, thank you so much. I love you all very much. I hope you're having a fantastic Monday and a great start to your week. I will see you again very soon for another challenge week video.